setting where uh, the mic is still doing its job i'm trying this fancy pop filter thing yeah, this is very cheap you can get this for nothing next to nothing on amazon uh, and uh, i'm hoping it looks sort of professional uh, and still kind of communicates like the kind of oral vibe of this uh, this thing if it looks really tacky, I will just bear with it. Okay. I was I was thinking about like a lot of things. It's a it's a very interesting moment in culture right now because nothing seems to be happening. Okay. Nothing seems to be happening. There's a Lok Sabha election going on. There is an IPL going on. Uh, big movies are coming out, but like apparently like everything has just stopped. Okay. If if you look into the Savarna world, if you look at look at things, like nobody is right now interested in anything. It's a strange lull. You know, it's the, it's a great lull. And I'm trying to think why that is happening. Like there's there's uh, no great TV show that people are really into. There's no great movie that people are losing their mind. Like last year for a minute there was Barbenheimer that people were like, oh Barbenheimer, you have to, you know. But even that was like a little half-hearted, like, you know, this is, this is like, there, there, there's just no nothing left, okay? Um, people are still going to the movies on autopilot, people are still like, oh, watch this show or watch that show, but everybody's just doing reruns of what they have been doing for a really long time, you know? It doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old or uh, 28 years old or 38 years old, you're all watching Friends, you're all watching... The office for the 17th time you're all watching Big Bang Theory you're all just going back to the same old and I think what is happening is we are right now reaching this point in India which is like the era of the boring the most basic personality types this is their moment right this is this is it this is your era finally you guys have won okay which is why this is this is a very interesting era to be a basic Savarna personality. Like there's this and, and, and it's not even that they're so basic that they're not even enthused about anything. Okay, like when I was remember last 10, 15 years, it's been a ride actually, you know, the early 2000s, uh, the first decade, um, I was still in college and then MBA and then I was working in that era. Like there was a different energy in the air. It felt like India was changing, things were changing. You had to keep up with things. You had to kind of like, uh, you know, uh, be part of some great project, you know, because that that's by the way, the first time this was happening. Oh, by 2020, you know, um, the then prime president, APJ Abdul Kalam had told us that by 2020, the year 2020, uh, uh, India would become a developed nation. So everybody felt like something was happening because malls were opening up, brands were coming in, people started going to Goa in big numbers for the cool holiday, you know, with your friends, not really like the family vacation thing. Like it was a cool holiday, very Dilchata vibe to it. Uh, dudes were discovering that they could go on a bullet bike to Ladakh and that can become a personality that's a viable archetype of a human being to be and in my era almost every guy did it or wanted to do it and they all went there they all made biking their passion they became bikers uh, out of nowhere Royal Enfield a company which was dead it was dead it was dying the USP of that company was the, the selling point of that company was that it makes bikes so bad so bad that nobody in the right mind will buy it so only the people who are very deeply committed to it sociopathically into bikes will 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 want anything to do with this motorcycle which gives bad mileage breaks down and you have like this deep unfulfilled like you know some kind of a gap in your life that your love and uh, work and family and children and pets can't fulfill and you need that 
with this inanimate motorcycle you know you're constantly greasing its chain and you're doing this and gearbox and battery and this and even with everything the bike will just sometimes not work it's raining bike will not work it's cold bike will not work bike needs to warm up it was a temperamental thing and an entire cohort of men just made it their personality when i say men by the way when i say these things i i almost always mean savarnas okay uh yes like you know biking is not just a savarna thing many bahujan men different equation yes 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 all of that but you know exactly the subculture i'm talking about okay the the goa holiday with friends started out as a savarna fantasy literally from a farhan akhtar movie okay where these three dudes are driving around in a open air convertible mercedes and they go and they stand looking you know away into the sea while uh, you know piche say you are taking a photo of the thing and everybody wanted to go to that fort and recreate that picture right started out as a savarna fantasy so let's give authorship to the culture okay don't come at me with like no but what do you mean i know a person who is sc or who is obc they make biking their personality they wanted to go to go yes 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 have you not been listening to what i'm saying the words that are coming out of my mouth i'm literally describing to you how this kind of works out and um, what i was trying to say is like there was a passion you know india will become great in 2020 2020 cricket will become great you know because that's the era <coughs> we won the first world cup you know t20 world cup mahindra singh dhoni as an icon arises uh, ipl hits uh, us uh, and uh, like i said malls are coming brands are coming people are having disposable income straight out of college in their first job one or two years of working to go on holidays all of these savarna fantasies of doing a bicycle trip in amsterdam or uh, belgium or going to turkey and like uh, you know istanbul and all of these fantasies were coming out right there was an energy and then by 2012 2013 you started seeing this energy become a little political that cohort suddenly decided to you know get behind the modi project you know everything was new everyone was like you know we need to do this we need to do this and like the idea of the modi project became like this thing that everyone wanted to get behind you know they all were like this is this is something that we need to build and uh, the the whole idea of uh, india needs to change it needs a certain kind of government and this was a major savarna fantasy by the way because the exact kind of india that they wanted to change from was a kind of political culture which had developed thanks to bahujan assertion you know if you look at the politics of india the nehru gandhi family 70s and the 80s you look at uh, i'm drinking milk by the way okay for those of you who probably think whatever um like this is not a cocktail it's milk with ice uh, i don't know why i'm being defensive <laughs> because i think i'm just conscious that i'm being on camera and i'm not uh, i'm not used to that but yeah what i was saying is that if you look at the politics of india in the 70s and in the 1980s there is a great kind of a uh, stagnation of power that is arriving like the nehru gandhi family like you know indira gandhi has 70s totally consolidated power um you know all state institutions you know agencies everything becomes like an extension of the party the party is an extension of her you know that was a slogan indira is india india is indira and all of those things there is a there is a whole kind of uh, uh certain kind of a nation emerging which is very much in sync with how if you look at south asia has developed you know this larger than life leader with links to the old world order uh, power center becomes the institutional framework like you can look at bangladesh and you can look at uh, you know sheikh hasina and she's she's a leader like that you know so you you it was it was kind of that and what did not go according to the script was 
actually the assertion by regional parties okay what started out with like you know uh, uh, some of these uh, obc led parties in the 1980s uh, you had people like karpuri thakur uh, you know some of the old school lobbyite socialist thinking was going on this great student movements anti emergency protests there was there was there was a whole churning and of course in the middle of the churning the great rise of kanchi ram sahib and the baujan samaj party it revolutionized the politics of the 1980s uh, and that rise is coinciding with the slow collapse of um, uh, of uh, the the congress party because um, what i think most people forget the the prime minister who came to power with the biggest mandate ever the most number of seats was not modi was not nehru was not even indira gandhi was rajiv gandhi in 1984 you know with indira gandhi's assassination the wave of sympathy like swept like all of india except andhra kind of voted for um, you know uh, rajiv gandhi in andhra because like it had a very local thing going on ntr had just kind of created uh, a telugu desam party uh, out of uh, out of thin air and uh, that had its own very strong regional uh, logic but that is the only regional logic that seemed to have prevailed at that point of time and rajiv gandhi comes with this enormous mandate almost the kind of mandate which makes leaders arrogant in thinking that they don't really now need to listen to people and that's what really started happening and this guy was so untalented he was so unsuited for any form of democratic discussion based deliberative federal politics where you devolve authority and give institutional independence so that checks and balances remain he was so unsuited and untalented singularly for that that uh, uh within 5 years right he became deeply unpopular and there was a massive churning and there's a rise of uh like i said on the one side these obc parties and the bahujan party and uh, bahujan samaj party you know this as other side there also the rise of bjp which is a faction of uh, uh savarna power brahmin power which is seeing an opportunity to seize uh, uh the hegemonic levers of power from this old school congressy faction because under rajiv gandhi they are kind of losing the consensus so you know it was rajiv gandhi government which uh makes uh, the blunders uh politically which which actually kills congress off in up like a party which was a up party primarily congress was uttar pradesh it was the heartland of congress and rajiv gandhi single handedly sort of like within a short period of time led to a series of things which completely dismantled the whole the whole thing and uh, most famously ayodhya locks of the babri uh, thing uh, it was rajiv gandhi government which opened it but it was the no holds barred approach of uh, uh, advani and the bjp which kind of truly capitalized on it because they were the ones who could do it right they were like we are out of power we don't have to pretend to keep everybody happy we can just say we are going to take the score audience and going to run with it and they did and you know the bjp like benefited immensely so on one side there was a rise of uh, you know these these <coughs> socialist obc parties and regional parties in north india all these new political leaders are coming out and on the other hand there is the rise of uh, kanchi ram sahib and the bsp a uh, young mayawati and on the other side there is also a collapse of the congress which is leading to the rise of bjp so that was basically the politics of the 1980s and uh, then in the 90s you see some of these um, <clears throat> obc socialist uh, uh, bahujan samaj party some of those what were called mandal politics you know uh, which were uh, centered around obc quota reservation and things of that nature that politics kind of maturing so you entered into this era of coalition governments where congress was now weak and it could not win power on its own and bjp was not strong enough to win power on its own so both congress and bjp you know needed 
these other parties to kind of make up the number of winning the parliament, right? And that's the year of the 90s and that's the year of the early 2000s, which Savarna English speaking liberals hate. The so called tax paying honest citizen Savarnas, they hate the era because it, in their minds, it was all these rabble, all of this, like, you know, uncouth village rural leaders who can't even speak English, who don't know anything, who are now suddenly storming the gates of parliament and dictating terms, you know, to the central government. And there were these coalition things and governments were falling frequently. And they were like, this is too unstable. This is not okay. Ew, you know. Uh, we need to have like a strong government and that's where all that fantasy was, you know. Uh, they had seen the rise of especially Mayavati in UP and, uh, uh, you know, Mayavati's spectacular win in uh, 2007 in UP on her own without coalition. You know, there, there was there was this, this whole anxiety that was in that English speaking mind and they were like, you know, th by the way, these were the same people for whom Rajiv Gandhi was the dream prime minister when he first came because he was suave, he was English speaking, he was French with Amitabh Bachchan, um, young Sonia Gandhi, Italian wife and they were like, you know, he's so debonair, he speaks about, you know, raising India's profile, ushering in a technological revolution. By the way, and almost every one of those buzzwords has been recreated by Modi, but Modi has shown that at least he's not like he's not as untalented as Rajiv Gandhi. So he's actually delivered or tried to project some of those things, which is why like his government has lasted longer or his popularity has lasted longer than Rajiv Gandhi. But anyways, my point being key, I was trying to tell you how in the early 2000s, there was like this whole project energy. We have to be part of something. You have to build something. You have to do something. And uh, you saw this kind of play out. And uh, by 2010, 11, 12, uh, some of that fatigue with the politics I've just described of the 80s and 90s and 2000s and seeing these parties, this is every day on TV, these English speaking uh, Savarnas and are coming and saying, oh, Lalu Yadav is so corrupt and Mayavati is so corrupt and the English newspaper, the Indian Express, the Hindu. Now these newspapers are a little careful. Actually, I can't even say that, like Tavleen Singh is still writing the same kind of articles in the Indian Express in 2024, where she's saying, what is this thing? What is this thing? This is caste is pointless and uh, anti-reservation, all kind of things they're saying even now in 2024, right? But early 2000s, late 90s, there was no check on this. There was hardly any... A uh, Bahujan person, SC, ST, OBC, Ambedkarite, Qatar Ambedkarite person speaking English in these spaces. So they had a near total control. You go to the university and all of these English speaking Savarnas are coming and telling you, oh, all of this, look at this, Rabri Devi has been made chief minister. Oh, what a tragedy. You read the newspaper, the Express, the Hindu, the Times of India is telling you, my God, this is happening. You turn on the TV, on the TV, they're making jokes about Lalu Prasad's accent and all of these things. This was, this was the norm. It was completely unchecked and um, that level of hate was there. So there was a fatigue with that kind of politics and in a changing India of the 2000s, the idea was now we need a change. We need a change and <coughs> it was Modi who chief minister of Gujarat very opportunistic in terms of po politically opportunistic I mean and very smart he understood the pulse he got it and if you go back and look at 2010 11 12 the first people to endorse Modi you know to kind of say you know what he would be if he ever became a prime minister that could be a really great thing. Were people like Ratan Tata? Were people like Preeti Zinta? You know, like that's the kind of crowd he picked. You know, not like the Bajrang Dal, uh, you know, uh, Prabhari or somebody. Not, not people like that. He got the Ratan Tatas, he got the Preeti Zintas, he got the, all of these things. He started hosting these 
giant vibrant Gujarat thing and like uh, he was one of the first uh, politicians uh, who made extensively sharp use of Twitter he had his own Twitter team and like he was he was speaking like you know uh, with this very very like topic of the day type things very a brilliant actually communication campaign and um, there was a section of Savarnas uh, all of these people straight out of engineering MBA college working in Bangalore, Bombay, Gurgaon three four years of working you've done the destination wedding and so on um, now you want something more and Modi was a project that they kind of got in so there was again this energy you know, we have to build Modi, we have to do this and there was this whole thing that like, you know, we have to, we have to kind of uh, change India and this is how you do it. And so, so they got behind that project. So you saw that whole thing culminate in what was called the Modi wave, you know, like they, they took over the whole thing and everywhere you went, you were like, oh, this is, and the, and the rise of that Modi is with the collapse of you know, uh, or the complete humiliation of the icon of Rahul Gandhi. Uh, I, I, I've always said this, one of the most fantastic um, actions or the one of the, one of the biggest uh, branding, uh, one of the best campaigns, best branding campaigns that BJP has ever done is not for BJP, is about Rahul Gandhi. Like they completely framed this guy as an out of touch, clueless, dynast uh, nepo baby who has just inherited in power and you know all of those things many of which seem very true were true in 2013 and 14 and on the other side you know modi painted himself as like this hard working grassroots man chaiwala came from nothing built everything now ratan tata is saying he is the guy industry people are saying he is the guy intellectuals were saying people like that all of these so-called Ashoka University you know uh, or these that kind of an elite academia types they were all in 2013-2014 saying yeah I mean well, well, not so bad like you know Godra was too long ago let's give this guy a chance because we don't want that kind of 90s politics to continue so there was like this whole move and mood to build things you know that energy with which that passion with which you work on that infield you know that passion with which you want to go to goa and like you know look away from the camera this was the era by the way people got into wanderlust i for the life of me cannot understand like i lived through that period to 2009 10 say shuru karke about 2016 17 tak. 17 even i would say uh, 16th or definitely like that four five uh, six years era my god this obsession with travel consumerism this idea that travel is deep you find yourself it's an experience an entirely new genre of people emerged this travel like that time the word influencer was in there travel influencer but they weren't influencers like in the sense they weren't like posting things that People were just like, you know, there, there was this one person in your friends group who had a great Facebook album. Like they would go to like a place and take these cool looking pictures and, you know, with a, like, um, you know, women in like a, a sundress or a sun hat and <coughs> they would hold a glass of wine and just look away like that's a camera. They just look away or just be reading and if dudes are there, they're all doing that Dil Chata pose that I was describing. Everyone's deep and everyone's kind of like, you know, in this in this mood. And there was an enthusiasm for it. Like um, uh, selfies and documenting yourself photographically became a huge thing. Huge, huge thing. Everybody was obsessed with it constantly. And like they were doing it constantly and um, you know it was it was it was uh, it was a thing actually if you if you go back candid wedding photography became became something that out of nowhere emerged like weddings that you you have the tradition you had this traditional photographer like he would go and he would say like okay um, 
लड़के के फादर लड़की के फादर मामा जी मामी जी चाचा जी चाची जी कम टेक फोटो ओके नाउ यूर एक्सचेंजिंग थिंग्स सो नाउ यू टेक फोटो नाउ यूर डूइंग दिस नाउ यू टेक फोटो देर वॉज देर वॉज दैट काइंड ऑफ ए फोटोग्राफर और वीडियोग्राफर यूजली बोर्ड whose job was to document important moments okay and so the younger audience may not know this but the culture back then was that all of this was recorded in an album or a video cassette or a cd and later on families used to watch it they would like play it because here's the other thing tv was not 24/7 or had just become 24/7 you know 24/7 hundreds of channel was still new so you know like before that era there was not so much content that you were constantly being bombarded by internet content was not a thing internet was not a thing tv was there for a few hours so people would like go back and see the wedding video we wedding album a lot of these things used to happen so there was always this character of documenting the wedding like wo sab ka photo le raha hai like wo sab ka le raha hai khane ka photo camera is panning like this children are running around that kind but in the middle of this like this again another savarna fantasy by the way is savarnas wanted to have a cool wedding thoda cool karna hai sab cheez ko you know like it's not enough that there's a camera just going mm, mm, mm. no they got a new breed of photographers emerged from facebook albums you know they had the professional facebook album page uh where they would charge like starting from 10000 15000 rupees going up to lakhs for candid wedding photography where their job was to walk around and just take these really cool looking almost uh candid but usually staged photographs okay where it looked spontaneous it made you look like a movie star it made you look like you in the middle of something around around the business of candid wedding photography came the wedding planner like it became such a big thing yashraj made films on it now there is a tv series on it right like this is this was and i have no doubt that there was some boutique wedding planner or something like that existing in some elite corner of you know lutians delhi or you know malabar hill bombay or something like that i don't discount that i'm sure that was there but there was like five people in all of india but like this idea that if you were like you know you were coming from a, a rich family rich savarna family you could do this you could have a, a stage and like you could have choreographers who would uh, who would uh, like teach your family what to dance and how to dance and what to do and like there be this photo you were a star of your own movie and then it's not just the wedding it's the bachelorette party it is the bachelor party what what why are you having these things again because i saw it on french so now i must have it right so people are doing all of those things and there is a photographer who sagai you know where they are exchanging rings but we have seen on friends and these shows that you have a proposal ring so proposal ka bhi photo khinch raha hai iska bhi khinch raha hai like there was and you know all of these things are being done with a passion okay people who know me from back then remember how angry i used to be now i just find this funny but i used to be aggravated by how seriously people were taking this kind of stuff and not only were they taking it seriously right they genuinely thought this was cool like shaadi ho rahi hai dulhan is coming and she is wearing aviator glasses so cool dulhan has come and she's sitting on a bullet wearing aviator glasses stop the press stop the press okay this is the coolest thing we have seen you know it was like what the hell is going on and it was not just one person doing this everyone was doing it some version of this there was a passion to this right so that's my point like in that era every wo bike thi kala to passion ke sath kar raha twitter pe jaakar wo gaali de raha hai ki like modi no wo bhi passion ke sath kar raha hai congress sucks pappu sucks like everyone has that bro you know 
Shadi candid wedding photography. They are the coolest, you know. There was this thing, I don't know if you, uh, some of the older uh, listeners, but my audience is mostly older actually, like when it's mostly people above 25 who listen to me. So you might be able to remember this trend. Like there was this album on Facebook which had gone viral where there was this like girl <coughs> uh, whose face we don't see. So she's, we just see like, you know, like her hand coming and like her face is away and she's walking. Like she would be, she would be like, like that, you know, and uh, with her hand stretched out and her face walking away and her partner or husband or whoever was is holding her hand while taking a picture of her walking away. My God, the number of people I allow who wanted to recreate this, still want to recreate this. I'm telling you, it was the strangest dystopian time to see this absolute culture of replicatable mediocrity. Kisi cheez mein koi originality nahi hai, kisi ko bother bhi nahi kar raha hai ki originality nahi hai, na kisi ko original banna hai. The only thing that we are obsessed with is, maine wo dekha hai, wo cool hai, mere ko ho karna hai, mere ko ho hi chahiye. Thoda kuch aap alag kar ro, nahi mere ko ho hi chahiye. That's it. That is all I want. You know. So there was this 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 thing in it, and then around twenty and and on the other side, like even counter culture started adopting the same energy. You know. This is when AIB became cool. TVF became cool. मतलब stand up comedy India में cool. Stand up comedian को लग रहा है कि वो ही comedian है पहले India में. They are the first ones who are done this. Like there is no culture of Hase Kavis and some Kavi Sammelans and you know there's no popular culture of mass comics like you know like literally the current chief minister of Punjab okay he is one of those old school mass Punjabi comics who used to record comedy cassettes which used to go viral the word viral was not there but like by now it's just Indian Express and Hindu bureaus which were sitting out of like a Times of India bureau, Hindustan Times bureau which is sitting out of Delhi doesn't give a shit what people in Fagwada, Bhatinda, uh, Ludhiana are listening to where like thousands, tens of thousands, lakhs of these cassettes are just going viral. Like every time I'd go to Punjab as a kid, like that's all I would hear. You know, all of these uh, bootleg uh, comedy, uh, uh, you know, cassettes, bootleg song cassettes. You know, there's a mass culture which was nowhere acknowledged, but some of these elite savarnas saw SNL, Saturday Night Live, and stand up comedians, and they were like, oh, no, we are going to do this. This is us. You know, we are bringing comedy. So, they took a comedy club, and in that there's spoken poetry happening, and uh, all kinds of things are happening. They started opening these small, 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 small rooms. In Bombay, in Delhi, Gurgaon, Bangalore, you know, where they tried to do all of this thing, it was an emerging art form. It was a, it was a niche thing. They're building stuff. They're building community. Chhota pandra saal ho gaye. Fifteen years have gone. Comedy in India or all of this has not gone out of the startup phase. That room which was fifteen years ago seating forty people, fifty people is still at forty, fifty people only. That 40-50 seater room has not evolved or grown into a 400 seater because that's the audience hasn't grown. But back then everybody was like, this is a thing. Social media, ye Buzzfeed wale aage. Okay, Buzzfeed wale aage aur go to literally US mein jo chal raha, usi ka ek um, white people youth culture, white people young millennial culture ka Indianized version bechna shuru kar diya man. They literally repackaged and recreated this strange version of 90s nostalgia, which we're still grappling with. One of my big, big issues, you know, like Poo, in my life, some of my live shows I remember talking about it. Like the character of Poo from Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gum. 2015-16 mein Buzzfeed humko bol raha hai, this is an iconic character. Are bhai, how is this an iconic character? We live through it. Okay, we were young. I was one of those people who was young, wanted to go see Shah Rukh movies madly. Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Kam was a big thing for us because it was supposed to be Kajol's last movie. Like she had retired, but then she had come back for this movie. So 
Shahrukh Kajol on screen and Amitabh Bachchan and also this. So this was still a big thing. This is before Amitabh had not yet completely become a joke. Like Amitabh Bachchan has been a joke now for a decade and a half. So people have forgotten that in the 90s there was an aura of around this guy. Like one of the big reasons Kaun uh, Banega Karopati, the TV show, became such a raging hit was because we got to see Amitabh Bachchan every day on TV. Because this dude never used to show up. There was an aura around him and he was he was inaccessible. There was a very old school star magnetism that he had around him. And um, Bachchan and Shah Rukh, uh, came on screen together for the first time in Mohabbate. I remember being in the audience. We lost our mind. And Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam was supposed to be like recreating that. It has Karan Johar. It has uh, direction. Shah Rukh Khan, Bachchan, Kajol is coming. Jaya Bachchan is coming. And you know, they got like this young guy, Rithik Roshan. Like I was there through the mania of Rithik Roshan exploding with Kahona Pyar Hai, right? So you had Rithik Roshan uh, in that movie also. And by the way, there's Karina Kapoor. Like that was not like it was a big thing for Bollywood types because she's like you know the Kapoor family and all that. But like clearly like apart from like these old school Bollywood types, none of us were really interested in Karina aspect of K3G when it came out. And her character actually, if you time it on screen, has very little time. She's there. She's mostly annoying and peripheral to the plot. Actually, the whole film doesn't have a plot. The whole film is only peripheral. But none of us came out of the theater thinking, oh, poo, what a cool character. Yet, in 2015, BuzzFeed was like, you are 16 reasons you are like poo. Or here are, like, this was the era of the listicles. Her cheese ka listicle hai, bhai. Here are seven reasons why you should, you are like Joey from Friends. Okay? Here are five reasons why. Coffee is good for you. You know, something like that. There's something very inane. And they made it a whole thing, whole popular culture, counterculture. Usme bhi wo energy hai. Like everyone's redefining something. So the political troll is redefining political culture. Unko lag hai, Twitter mein wo politics ko innovate kar rahe. This is the other thing. Now politics only happens on Twitter, it seems. But back then, it was like, you know, uh, these people were like, you know, Twitter is going to change politics and we are the ones who are leading it and all the old school politicians were like, Ye kya hai? this is doesn't matter and everything. They all eventually came around. But like, even if you were a troll, you were doing it with a passion, like you're redefining something. You're a biker, you're redefining something. You're wanderlusting, you're redefining something. You know, her cheese may have quite passion hai. and sometime around 2017, 18, 19, this passion just starts leaking out. Everything starts becoming repetitive. Like everything has always been repetitive, but like local, local like that's the that's beauty of the basic mind. When you see something five times, you don't consider it repetitive. You see it 10 times, you still don't consider it repetitive. You will want to see it another 15 times and you'll be like, hmm, I can see it another 10 times. But 25 times after you've seen it, 26th time, you may go like, ah, huh, hmm, I don't find this as exciting as I used to. Like it will take 26 times or 260 times or whatever. Like how many times have you all watched Friends? Like the actors have started dying out. These people are senior citizens now or close to becoming senior citizens you're still watching them you know go like oh no i'll be turning 30 Ooh. and people are still doing it 24 24 may people are still going oh shit i turn 30 and you know they're trying to kind of recreate some kind of cultural anxiety which they have seen from the american sitcom show our life patterns are different. 30 is not what it means to us, what it means to them or did mean to them in that culture, in that point in time. But usne, usse kya hai? Aapne TV mein dekha, aapko karna hai. You know, so by 2017, 2018, it seemed everybody had done 
the same few things so many times that it didn't feel fresh anymore. Like stand-up comedy, you have listened to apne goa bhi you've gone many times ladakh also you've gone many times overseas also you've gone apne sari wo album album bana li very or like looking away like this and that you know you've done the designer wedding also you've gone to the designer weddings of all your friends also designer weddings of all your cousins also politically bhi ho gaya modi ek baar jeet gaya do baar jeet gaya he's winning everything you know obama has come to india sab kuch ho gaya you know the film doesn't end right it's not a movie it's not a show it doesn't end it just loops it just goes on and on and on that's how life works that's how eras work okay eras is not like every like eras is not like the taylor swift eras like you don't get like a recap of all the different versions of you that you were you know this this strange sort of nostalgia trip of your personal growth that's not how these things work things just keep happening and happening and happening till you lose context till it just seems repetitive till it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier and what is crazy to you is new to somebody else so now they are just starting up right so we seem to be in this moment in time where we are in the middle of we haven't gone too crazy like it doesn't it hasn't gone too crazy for us therefore it is not new enough for another cycle to begin so we are somewhere in the middle and this started around the 17 18 19 where people were like ah ho gaya ab sab kuch kya kare kya kare and then you know covid came and everybody was indoors and people kind of lost their mind and you know and suddenly you know covid made everyone um because of locked in like they they retreated into their devices and everyone again and i'm only talking about savarnas by the way okay uh, standard dude by the way you should know this these elite savarnas jiski main baat kar raha hu ye jo ye jo pura existential crisis hai ye main elite english savarnas urban english savarnas ki baat kar raha hu so covid what happened is like a lot of these people just completely like went into the internet discourse and it was a strange time where there's a lot of political upheaval social anxiety existential anxiety like we didn't know on day 1 of the pandemic that okay in 2 years time it will be done because they were like maybe this will never go maybe this is the new normal maybe this is how life will be could go on for 5 years like you just felt uncertain all the time so it forced you to be more contemplative more reflective so there was there was again something new for people to do so a lot of these savarnas got into social justice because that's what that's what people uh, in the west were doing because there was time of great upheaval in in that society there was black lives matter there was you know even in india there was like you know this this migrant walking crisis all kinds of things were playing out so people just got into social justice a little bit and there was like again like you know when they got into it there was so much to learn the anti caste discourse took off at this point of time online online it took off online i mean because ambedkarites had been there since the time of baba saheb and even before that they were just not called ambedkarites back then anti caste movement is a really old grassroots movement which has been going on through culture counter culture all kinds of these great things and the movement has been still unfolding in small small neighborhoods villages towns across india right the scale the scope the diffused nature of it is not what i'm talking about here that is going on any which ways right it's just that for the first time there were there was a critical mass of english speaking savarna presenting uh people from sc st obc backgrounds who were on platforms like uh instagram who were on twitter and uh, you know post rohit vemula and uh post uh, the manisha valmiki hathras case uh a lot of that kind of galvanized into this one space like the movement had been building up some of these in these elite institutions for a long time 
you know in places like jnu uh, you know the rise of uh, you know organizations like bapsa in places like tis uh, in many of the other central universities uh, you know uh, uh, legendary figures like anup bhai who have been working in nalanda who set up nalanda for years and years and like the footprint of this was just growing you know round table india had been like around for almost like 10 years uh, plus and so on and all these great intellectual young minds older mature people all of that there was a critical mass and in covid everybody was on the phone and the savarna need to look at self justice and reflective contemplative politics while they were trying to learn something new again get really passionate about it coincided with this critical mass being present and like there was like this great overlap and suddenly you saw like all of these things come together there was me too in a different context like you know so that me too movement came over there was this all manners of you know different kind of social justice ideas uh, about environment about you know uh, anti fascist uh, you know uh, against islamophobia all manners of different kind of strains of social justice kind of movement came together and everybody was again there was for a brief moment there was this renaissance in the savarna culture that you could learn something and you could repackage your identity you could reinvent yourself as somebody else you know like oh i'm learning so much i'm trying to be a good ally i'm trying to do the correct thing and so on and then covid went people came out of their homes people came out of their phones people started going on the holidays you could like you know do all and all those things you could get back to your life and now we are back to that phase you know where everything is just boring you know the marvel movies have come like there's so many marvel movies like after avengers and infinity war and whatever like iron man is dead then they might bring him back to mayor tomorrow there have been like dozen batman movies there are joker movies sab ho gaya like wo star wars movies have come and gone uh, james bond everything is done everything is done okay like there's nothing new left in this arc of the curve anymore you know everything is done stand up comedy is done culture is dead okay culture is dead there's there's no great exciting writer that is coming out um academia is over in india at least in academia culture is dead academia is dead you know all of these public universities institutions of excellence research institutions god knows what research is they're doing nothing speaks to you know the the urgency of our social systems of our masses anymore it just sort of exists that even it's not even like the right wing is like you know that's the other thing right wing is taking over these institutions like hai kya wahan par take over karne ke liye what is left you know like all of these savarna academics like you know they just speak maybe slightly better english and performative uh inclusive things they will say you know on eid they will say eid mubarak and like you know uh they will meet you and say jai bhim comrade or something like that they they do that but in terms of academia what have they actually created and what is the right wing actually trying to change nothing it's the same the only thing is they were talking in this very english polished india is a referendum and you know is a daily referendum and we wake up and these other people will come and they will be like na pranam acharya ji and so on that's it that's it there's nothing left academia is over culture is dead bollywood is gone right like it is so bad that we have to reinvent shahrukh khan in the year of 2024 we have to kind of be like no shahrukh khan will save us right so shahrukh went away for like you know many years didn't have a movie he came back ab wo bhi ho gaya he has done three movies also and there's diminishing returns next shahrukh movie you will be like eh, eh. like some people will go and like so this is this is a joke that i do like every time there is some supposedly big bollywood movie coming you know like uh, or bollywood or telugu or whatever is the big thing like you know pushpa or something or you know there's this movie which came out recently uh, fighter or anything you just go to the youtube comment and there'll be at least 10 comments saying goosebumps 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 
goosebumps everything is goosebumps because nothing is goosebumps nothing is exciting when everything is exciting do you understand like you can you can play it both ways everything is exciting so nothing is exciting nothing is exciting so everything is exciting whatever like you know it's it's just word play it is basically a metaphor of absolute intellectual bankruptcy there is there culture is dead the market has given up like nobody in the market is also taking it themselves seriously like the era that i was talking about jab sabko passion tha india ko rebuild karna tha you know make india a developed country by the year 2020 mission 2020 now that date has been rescheduled like a snooze alarm button now it's 2047 you know like even that gang which was trying to like you know we are building these companies startup venture capitalist bro we are changing india even those guys have kind of cooled off they are kind of like eh, 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 byju's is imploding uh, i read the news today ola is pulling out of uh, markets of uk new zealand australia like their international expansion like you go back and read the news stories ola was supposed to replace uber like was supposed to be a global challenger they are like now basically saying okay let's 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 take it back a little bit paytm guy is in trouble that bharat pay guy ashneer grover there's a lookout notice at delhi airport like he can't leave india without like you know notifying people so even that section of people have cooled down a little bit you know they are no longer talking about these things like that like even like narayan murthy is saying young people want to take holidays instead of working hard which means he is also justifying he is also kind of feeling that that energy is not there of course it is uh, you know uh, melted boomer brain he thinks that it is because youth is lazy because in 2024 nobody wants to work 70 hours a week for 3 and a half lakh rupees per annum package you know like in his head that means the youth is soft or not serious enough but even he feels it that passion is gone the feeling is gone the passion is gone it's over baby and in the middle of all of this in this desert this existential marusthal marubhumi this 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 dead land this waste land you know uh, there that's a that's a ts eliot uh, reference uh, there you know Uh, dead land this is the dead land this is waste land this is cactus land you know this is this is how the world ends not with a bang but with a whimper in the middle of this complete moment of lull the basic people they have decided that they need to explore themselves they are trying to find meaning they are going to do vipassana they are going they are taking up kickboxing they are making bad painting wo kaanch glass lekar they are making ganda ganda circle paintings on it they are all like taking water color and like making abstract shapes and splashes on it and they are like making pottery and trying to convince themselves that this is some deep meaning to it like like here's the thing maybe you don't need to look for a deeper meaning i come to me i'll tell you what the deeper meaning of your life is the deeper meaning of your life is you don't have depth tum nahi ho profound bhai you're not deep you're not profound tum boring ho tum basic ho chhodo ye sab you know this idea that like if you if you do meditation you will discover some level inside you or you will get some meaning you'll get some passion you know you'll get some some positivity uh this is this is dumb this is stupid you're not deep this this generation which is looking for you know this post 27 28 years old 30 year old this this generation of savarnas which is you know english speaking urban has had some kind of a you know white collar economic thing or has ancestral wealth you guys just need to shut up boring ho accept kar lo koi judgment nahi there's no judgment this pressure to be interesting to be passionate to be redefining that era is gone it's gone class khatam office band chutti it's over you don't need to be interesting okay bear biceps has has it right this is why i call him lord bear biceps he has given up 
Okay, he's not even trying to be cool. He's not. He's not trying to be anything. He's like, what do you like hearing? You like hearing dudes come and tell you. If your name is S and H, is, then in your bank balance, mein, that's what you want to hear. Here is twenty versions of the same conversation. He's not even trying to be interesting. He, the more you call him basic, boring jokes on you, he's he's basic and boring. How many times will you see friends? कुछ नया देखने की क्षमता है डू यू हैव ए पॉपुलर इमेजिनेशन आउटसाइड ऑफ नेटफ्लिक्स यू थिंक यू नो दैट दैट्स इट लाइक वॉट एवर न्यू शो नेटफ्लिक्स विल पुश यू विल टॉक अबाउट इट दैट्स इट आई रिमेम्बर ड्यूरिंग कोविड डे वॉज पीरियड वेर टाइगर किंग वॉज अ थिंग पीपल वर मेकिंग मीम्स आउट ऑफ इट टी शर्ट आउट ऑफ इट वाई बिकॉज दैट वॉज द शो नेटफ्लिक्स इज पुशिंग और एमेजॉन प्राइम इज पुशिंग वॉट एवर शो दे मेक they'll push at you for two weeks and like that will become your personality you will want to talk about it tweet about it joke about it that's it you are calling somebody else basic and boring tum kisi ki aqal ka mazak uda rahe ho what a absolutely lack of what an absolute lack of self awareness within this cohort there is there is no deep hey 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 listen listen i'm telling you it's fine be boring be basic that's it okay hai okay hai kuch naya nahi hai nothing has to be new nothing has to be deep you don't need to do meditation you don't need to unlock chakras you don't need to kind of get that fit you don't need to watch this new set of animes to fit in you don't need to listen to k pop if that's not what you're into don't do it to fit in you don't need to fit in it's okay let it go some of these things your you've grown out of that this is the other thing nobody in my era knows how to grow old especially this savarna cohort inko to aata hi nahi hai how to grow old with with some grace okay they they just want something you know like so you have 40 year olds wearing like batman t-shirt and like wohi college ke zamane ke boxer shorts and still trying to be like oh we are cool and we are cool and i know i also do it but like you know like i have never claimed i'm not a hypocrite okay so don't come at me i will still continue to do it okay and i will still continue to wear message t-shirts and you know come wearing like funny funny shirts and caps and hats and things and like i i still do it okay i still do it i'll i'll be shameless about it and you can call me boring in midlife crisis and so on i'll be fine with it i'm not going to fight you on it i'm like a bald 38 year old dude who lives with his cat okay that's not as interesting as it sounds and if someone says well that's not interesting i love you i love you immediately okay because here's the thing it's fine to be boring so just so just put on friends again go watch sheldon cooper knock on penny's door again you know go watch you know kuch kuch hota hai and say what a great movie go watch ddlj and say this is the iconic romance it's a 30 year old movie don't let that stop you it's a 30 year old movie which people were ironically humorously critiquing in the mainstream 10 years ago but don't let it stop you okay don't let it stop you say that this is romance say shahrukh khan like he's close to 50, he's close to 50 or 60 i don't know like he's old he is older than i think what amitabh bachchan was when amitabh bachchan came in mohabbate like that's how old shahrukh khan is right now but don't let that stop you he still he still romance for you damn it he is still he still king of love for you hold on to it don't let anything go okay be basic be fully basic man lo ragad lo apne upar do that like photo of wo haath pakad ke photo khichana do that do that now okay jao abhi bhi wonder lust photo kicho goa ke beech mein jaake bolo that this is this is uh, you know dil jata hai take that bike ride to ladakh while we still have it before the chinese come in right so like do go do that sab kar lo 
वो मतलब वो ए आई बी का वो तन्मय बर्ड वो ऐसे गंदी गंदी क्रेड की आइडे बनाए जा रहे हैं लाइक राहुल द्रविड को बोलेंगे कि वो गुंडा है यू नो समिंग लाइक दैट लाइक इट्स हैक इट्स नॉट ओरिजिनल इट्स अक आई एम श्योर ही नोज इट or maybe he's so dumb that even he doesn't know it and that's fine that beautiful is the era of the basic is the era of the boring everything is boring and nothing is new and culture is dead and the market has given up and academia is over and there is nothing left to do except watch the world slowly implode there's a genocide going on in uh, gaza there's the, the war in ukraine is still going on all manners of low intensity conflicts and refugee crisis is happening all across the world in african countries in congo people are dying trying to you know mine uh, the rare earth minerals which go into your uh, electric uh, batteries but don't let that stop you from saying that you know uh fossil fuels are bad just just go with it just go with it kuch kuch bacha hi nahi hai like wait for everything to now just implode and a new era of crazy to come like we are we are, we are so jaded now nothing is new like we will keep we will be 60 years old and still keep watching joy don't share food you know हाउ यू डूइंग सिक्सटी इयर्स ओल्ड हो जाओगे आर्थराइटिस हो गया है ठीक है यूर पींग इन अग यू नो बिकॉज वट एवर देर इज इशूज यूर ऑन अ डायलिसिस मशीन किडनी इज बींग पम्प्ड एंड यू नो वो वो डॉक्टर आपको बोल रहा है कि सर आपको स्टेज फोर कैंसर हो गया है आप आप बचने नहीं वाले हो एंड योर लास्ट फ्यू डेज आर लेफ वॉट डू यू वॉन्ट टू डू एंड यूर लाइक आई जस्ट वॉन्ट वॉच फ्रेंड्स वन मोर टाइम <laughs> like that's that's what this generation is and that's what that's this this zone we are caught in the great lull the great nothingness the era of the boring the era of the basic bye bye right if you like this episode please consider um following me on patreon uh where i do a second show a small half an hour on um the weekly news and things of that nature the absurdities and the surreal stuff which is happening around uh if you don't really if you've had enough of me and if you don't want to listen to me that much i completely understand i can't tolerate myself in that case i would would request you to go to buy me a coffee and please like support me i have never monetized my content before i've put a lot of free stuff out but it's becoming difficult and i may not have my job and my financial sustenance for a long period of time that i can see so any support any consistent support would be useful helpful or you can just keep listening to my free shit i don't mind thank you very much jabim see you all